Hello and welcome to Red Tree Church's online service. We just wanted to say thank you so much for listening in today. And no matter where you are tuning in from, we love to stay connected with our online community, whether that's through our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, our Church Center app, or of course our podcast. And whether this is your first time listening or your hundredth time listening, we hope that you are encouraged and inspired by today's message. So let's take a listen. All right, good deal. Hey, we're doing a series called What's Next? Uh, we've talked about this. There's always something next in your life, uh, whether it's a school, a job, a uh, relationship. Uh, maybe they don't know it yet, but you do. It's, you know it's coming. Um, but like, there's always this thing that's next for you. And so today I want to ask this question about, well, actually, it's called, the, the, the title of my talk is called, You Decide. So, so what's next? You decide. You decide what's next for you and for your family and for your kids. And, in, and there's no pressure in that at all, is there, right? You just go ahead and decide, and that's what we're going to talk about today is what's next, and then you decide what that is. How many of you struggle with making decisions? Anybody? Anybody? Go ahead and raise your hand up. Yeah, if your spouse isn't raising their hand, you can raise their hand for them, right? Like, here's the most haunting question for me on every Sunday. I mean, and and this this comes to me all the time, every week, and I'm like, it's not going to happen. Surely it won't happen. It's like, what do you want to eat? And it's like, oh, man, right? It's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. What do you want to eat? And for me, it's like, babe, I've preached my guts out twice already. Um, like, it's, it's pretty graphic. You're welcome. Um, I just, I, I, I honestly, I, I don't care where it is we eat, as long as it's not Pizza Hut or any type of pizza afterwards, or as long as it's not Jimmy John's after that, or as long as it's not a Mexican joint after that, or as long as it's not, and I start <laughs> like, okay, so where do you want to eat, right, really? So did, does anyone ever struggle with that? Where do you want to eat? Like that question. <laughs> It's so complex, but it shouldn't be, right? Like, and so for, I'm wanting to start a barbecue truck, and, and there's two names. One of them is called, I can tell you the other one, I can't tell you. But one of them is called, I don't care. I, I want to start a barbecue truck, and I want to call it, I don't care. Because when you say, hey, where do you want to eat? I don't care. Oh, I know where that is. Pastor Chad just actually started that restaurant right over there. So gotcha, you're all going to be there, right? Fantastic. But this, 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 making a decision sometimes is complex. Because you've pro, you've conned everything, you've made a list, you've tried to lay it all out. And really you feel like you want to do this, but you know you shouldn't want to do that. But you're like inside, you're like, eh, I kind of really still want to. Or maybe it's like you're trying to talk yourself out of a decision and you know you're supposed to do this. And so there's all these different things that happen, even with your own relationships, even with your own life, no matter what the circumstances may be. And I understand that, you know, picking a place to eat is pretty trivial, but it's okay. It's, it's a great Example of making a decision. Well, the same is true for your faith. A lot of times as you continue to mature in your faith, as you continue to grow in your faith, it is a great thing to be challenged in what you believe. Like I I, I think for a little bit, some of us grew up where we were maybe spoon-fed what to believe in the church, right? It was just like, this is what you believe and don't ask why, you just believe it, right? And I don't know if you grew up in that environment, but it's like, Okay, that's what we believe. And then you met resistance, and all of a sudden you're like, ah, I really don't know why I believe what I believe. And that's called apologetics. That means there's no position in your life, in your mind, in your brain, in your soul, to be able to defend what it is that you believe when you look at Scripture. And so this idea of what's next, a lot of times it's a new teaching, a lot of times it's growth, maybe in faith. And you need to be able to get to the spot to where it's like, okay, No matter what, I'm going to follow Jesus. And here's why. Even if you do not know what is next, if you are a Christ follower, and you're not a Christ follower, I would encourage you, man, to begin to investigate that. But if you are a Christ follower, still follow Jesus. At all cost, at all expense to you, at all, maybe it didn't happen this way. Maybe it didn't go the way you wanted it to go. God didn't show up. Then you're just, you're upset, you're mad, you're conflicted, and whatever it may be. Do you know the answer on the other side of it? No. But the best thing I can tell you is to continue to still pursue Jesus, no matter what it may cost you. And so my, my goal every Sunday is to make sure that the gospel is clear. To make sure that we're preaching in a way, that teaching in a way, that all people have an understanding of what was said. And so one of the things I heard years ago was if it's a mist from the pulpit, that's what we used to have pulpits and people. If it's a mist from the metal leg wooden platform, um, 
it will be a fog in the, cl- in, in, in the crowd. If what I'm saying is kind of complicated, it doesn't make sense to me. When it is relayed, the church is not going to be able to understand because I did not communicate it well. And so my goal every Sunday is to try to communicate crystal clear gospel, crystal clear Jesus for all people. Remember a couple weeks ago, we said this, actually probably a couple months ago now. Andy Stanley said this, we all decide and choose if we want to follow Jesus. Remember me saying this? But then he also said, but we do not get to decide how we follow him. And there's the big difference. We have decided in our own lives, some of your friends have decided in their own lives that we want to pick and choose really truly how we follow Jesus. And Jesus is like, whoa, hang on a second about that, bro. Got a question for you. I don't know if Jesus calls you bro or not. But he said, remember when I told you that you choose to follow me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to follow Jesus. I, I died for you. It's great. You forfeited everything in your life, though. You surrendered everything. Can you, can you put the lyrics back up? And I know this is going to mess up everything in the back of the house. I, I bragged on you earlier because I knew this may be coming, so I'm sorry. Back there, Elizabeth. Can you put the lyrics up of that last song that we just sang? Um, specifically, uh, that, that, that uh, bridge or the first verse. And I, I, I know maybe you don't know what the bridge is, so I apologize. Can you put up the, the first slide of that song and i'm just going to walk us through this song real quick this is not in my sermon but as we sit in there listening to it so the moon and the stars they wept the morning sun was dead go ahead go to the next one the savior of the world has fallen his body on the cross next slide his blood pour out for us the weight of every curse upon him go to the next one and then let's kind of hold it right here one final breath gave as heaven looked away okay i'm sorry one more the Son of God was laid in darkness, a battle in the grave. Next slide. The war on death was, wa- uh, was waged, the power of hell forever broken. Next slide. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled away. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now, death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King, watch this right here, has rendered you defeated. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Oh, man. Guys, these words. Like, it's just not a song. It's just not chords being played. It's just not cymbals being crashed. Man, for for Christ followers, our resurrected king, my resurrected king, Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, has rendered you defeated. Next slide. Forever he is glorified. When? Forever. Yeah, but I don't feel like it. It doesn't matter. Forever he will be glorified. Yeah, but he didn't do what I wanted him to do. That's okay. Forever he will be glorified. Yeah, but I'm not, I just can't. But I need more like goosebumps and I mean like, woo, the hair stood on the back of my neck. That's not necessary because forever he will be glorified. Next slide. Forever he is lifted high. Forever he is risen. Next slide. He is alive. Next slide. We say that one quite a bit. The ground began to shake. The stone was rolled away. Woo! Watch out. We're having church now. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Death, where is your sting? I've been in many, many hospital rooms laying, sitting beside a deathbed. There's a huge difference of a saint who has followed Jesus, who has ran the course, and every family member in there knows they're going to heaven. I'm going to get to see him someday in heaven. Versus, Chad, can you share the gospel with him one more time? Chad, can you please pray with him one more time? Chad, we don't know where grandpa is going to go. Chad, we don't know what's going to happen to mom. Chad, we don't understand. We don't know. Chad, can you, can you do that thing where you pray? And then you say stuff like, hey, listen, if you can hear me, squeeze my hand. And they don't squeeze my hand. You see, there's a huge difference. Huge difference of knowing of where people are in their faith and where they're not in their faith. Because forever he is lifted high. Now death, where's your sting? There's no more sting for the Christ follower. Next slide. Our resurrected king has rendered you defeated. Satan, death, there's no more sting. You have no more hope. You have no more chance. You have no more rule in my life. Because why? Forever he will be lifted high. Forever he will be glorified. Forever. Even in the darkest moments of even we do not understand, Jesus is still alive. Amen? 
because he is a lot. Well, I'm telling you, Red Tree, if you don't get excited about that, I don't know what you're going to get excited about because the Cardinals ain't producing nothing no more this year. <laughs> oh, I'm bitter about that. Lord, help me preach the gospel. Not about that. Oh, son, 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 son. So let's jump into this. Jesus is having this conversation, and people are like, man, Jesus, we love it when you feed us. We love it when you heal people. We love to do that thing that was water to wine, like the Baptists are losing their mind, right? Like, Jesus, do this thing, like, and bring manna from heaven, like, continue to provide for us. Give us bread. Give us all these things. Let us, like, really just basically benefit well from following you, right? As long as we keep following you, you're going to keep feeding us. And then this is where everything begins to change. Luke chapter 6, starting in verse 60. This is where we're, we're, we're kind of jumping in the middle of a conversation. And watch this. Jesus says, on hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is the hard teaching. Who can accept it? Have you ever heard a hard teaching from Jesus? And you're like, are you kidding? Pray for my enemies? I don't even pray for my spouse. And sometimes they're my enemy. But anyway, like, I, don't even, I, don't even pray, I don't even pray for people I like. And you want me to pray for my enemies? You want me to bless people? You want me to forgive people? You want me to love people? Now, Jesus, surely there's an asterisk in here somewhere. And we lost this in the original Greek and the original Hebrew. And we, like, we lost that in translation. So somewhere it's got to be in there. And sometimes Jesus' teaching is hard, isn't it? If you're like, no, it's not. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> Can I just be honest with you? If following Jesus is not causing conflict in your life, you're doing it wrong. Like, and I don't mean like, oh boy, that's, uh, you're really going to draw people to him today. That's not my job. My job is to preach the truth and present the gospel and let people respond to him. Amen? Amen. That means I agree. So, so, so for, for me, there are teachings in scriptures where I'm like, man, I have a hard time understanding that. I, I, I'm wrestling through some things. Theologically, I, I may not be where I need to be, and I'm still trying to figure things out. I'm still trying to grow in my faith and pursue holiness daily. I'm still trying to make sure I make the best decision that I can, not just for me, but for my bride and for my kids. Because I want to know, I want to be someone who said, he followed Jesus well. And there are difficult situations, there's difficult conversations, and there's difficult teachings that Jesus knew this was one. So what is this teaching that Jesus just gave? I'm glad you asked that question because I was about to read that. Verse 53, this is what he says. Jesus said to them, listen, this is where it gets weird. And this is where he started to lose the crowd. And you're about to find out why. Verse 53 says this. Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And I think it was at that moment, all the moms went over to the kids, and they're like, here, kids, come over here a little bit more. Come over. Let's, let's go over here a little bit. Cover your ears. Cover your ears, right? And then all, and, and you know Peter's like backstage listening. He's like, oh, he's doing good. He's doing good. All of a sudden, Peter goes, wait, what, what did he say? Is he doing that eat my flesh and drink my blood stuff again? Mm, this is not going to go well. So Pete's back there in the back, and he's trying to figure things out. And I, I, I imagine this. And so anyway, Jesus continues verse, verse 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, he goes, I knew it. I knew he was going with this, has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. But whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogues in Capernaum. Now, if you read that and you go, okay, man, I am out of here. Are y'all you, are you about to like eat some like people and drink some blood? This is why I got out of church, man. It's weird. Church is weird, right? J Jesus isn't talking about eating his physical body and drinking his physical blood. But what he's saying is when you are consumed by me, when I am consumed into you, I have all of you and you have all of me. You have all of me in your life. And you're choosing to separate from other groups. You're choosing to separate yourself from other teachings. And you are choosing to pursue me and have all of me at all costs in everything. Now, I imagine Pete and like the disciples are like, okay, at this moment they come up to stage and are like, uh, guys, excuse me. 
We will be right back. I'm just going to take Jesus backstage real quick. Um, Matthew, you come up, do some real cool tax collecting jokes and make people laugh. And Jesus, we're going to go back here, right? And Jesus kind of comes back with Peter and he's like, Jesus, what are you doing, man? Like, watch, look, you can see people walking away. Did you see that one mom cover up her kids' ears because they were scared to death? You can't be going up and like, I did not say eat my blood and drink or my body, blah, blah, blah. Like, you can't do that, right? Like, you're freaking people out, man. You need to stop that right now. Now, that, that, that didn't happen, but I, I, I could imagine the disciples like, oh, man, here we go. Like, we're, we're losing ground. People are beginning to leave. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that truth does that? Ooh. Huh? Have you ever noticed that before? Truth has the real potential and the real ability to scatter people. Truth has the real potential and the ability for you to lose a lot of friends. Sometimes it costs us much to follow Jesus. Sometimes it costs you that job promotion because you're not willing to sacrifice character or integrity in your faith to do whatever needs to be done to get the job because you're a Christ follower. Sometimes it costs you friends because you won't go to that spot. You won't continue to laugh at that joke. You won't continue to allow those things to type of happen because you, you, you're a Christ follower and you're trying to pursue Jesus and you know these things do not bring holiness. These things do not bring glory to him. And then what you and I are trying to do as Christ followers is to look more like Jesus daily. But what happens, I think a lot of us, when we accept Christ, we look like Jesus the most we ever will in that moment. And then we begin to digress. We begin to maybe shrink back away from what Jesus really is because we thought it was just a one-time decision. But it is a relationship that drives your whole life from that moment forward. It is in those moments of discipleship that you begin to learn the complex part of following Jesus. It's the moments that you cry. It's the moments that you wail out to God because he didn't do what you wanted him to do and you're mad about it, but you're still going to follow him because you know he is Jesus. So the disciples see the group starting to disperse, starting to leave, and they're going, and all of a sudden Jesus tells them this. Well, okay, well, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? But then uh, continue on in verse 61. Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them. Now, when he, Jesus is talking about the disciples, he's talking about the whole group of people. Watch what Jesus says to them, because he can read a room. He can read a crowd. Like that, that, There's times that I say things, and all of a sudden, some of y'all go, wait, what did you say? Right? Like, oh, oh okay, I'm, I'm back in. And then I know, like, okay, I'm going to camp out here a little bit, and we're going to talk about this. Jesus does the same thing. Not that I communicate like Jesus at all. But he says this. Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? Basically, he said, hey, what? <laughs> does this teaching offend you? How mad are you going to be when I, when I go back up with my father, where, where I've been? And I came down. But how, how upset is that going to offend you? And then verse 54. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 63. The spirit gives life. The life counts for nothing. The words I've spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. Like, oh, man, he's, he's, call, he's calling people out. Jesus, like you're being mean to people. Jesus, you're preaching some hard truths. Jesus, you know like the crowd, they're not going to follow you, bro. Keep, keep feeding them. Right? Not like, like, like spiritual things. Clearly, everybody ain't wanting that. Give them some physical things. Like call up Domino's. Right? Get, get some food rolling. Like do that fish and chip things again. Like that's awesome. Like we'll go Long John. For Jesus had known from the beginning... Which of them did not believe and who would betray him? And he wanted to say, or he, he went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. Wow, 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 wow. If you have never found a reason to continue to pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that's your verse. I, I, I'll read it again. Verse 65, he went on to say, this is why I told you 
This is Jesus speaking. This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. For some of you, maybe this is why that, that loved one of yours has not come to know Jesus Christ. It's because God has not enabled them yet. You, you, if, for some of you that maybe you're familiar with the teachings of the scripture, maybe there's a part you remember where, where a guy named Saul was traveling through Damascus. And it says that there's something like his eye, some fell off his eyes like scales. And then he began to see spiritually. He finally had an understanding of who God is and, and what it was all about. And his life drastically changed from that moment. But before then, he was enabled to know and to see. And maybe for some of you here this morning, like you, you feel like, like you have been like disabled from understanding Jesus. Like you haven't experienced his love. And, and maybe this morning it's like now you're going to be enabled. Like this is the time. This is the place where God is calling you and drawing you to himself. And this is that time where you're hearing the truth of God preached and you understand, I have to do something. Like I am so confused about so many other things, but I do know that I need Jesus. And for you, like in this moment, like why is this begin to like resonate with me? Why am I beginning to understand it? Why am I beginning to see it differently? Well, it's because God chooses and God knows those who are going to follow him. And this is that moment that you are being enabled to see, to hear the truth proclaimed, said in many services, experienced it before. But maybe today's that day. And then he goes on and says this, verse 66. From this time, many of his disciples, this is the big crowd disciples, turned back. And they no longer followed him. <laughs> Some have probably walked days, maybe weeks, maybe months, maybe a year. I, I, but Jesus was doing what he was called to do, what he was sent to do. And that was to preach the truth. You see, Jesus wasn't worried about, guys, we just need to build a really big group. Because bigger groups mean more power. That was never Jesus' thing. That's what the disciples were wanting. Like, um, Jesus, real quick, if the people leave, just so you understand what you're doing right now, Jesus. <laughs> I love that. Like, they're the buffer. The people are the buffer between us and the government. Like the people are the buffer from those who are wanting to crucify you. The people are the buffer from the Romans. What are you, like, you're going to cause us to get killed. Would you stop that? One of the saddest verses in all of scripture. And I want to, I want to put you there real quick. I want you to be there. Your situation right now where you are, your life right now where you are, your doubts, your fears, your conflict, your hate. I want you to take all of that and I want you to stand right there in this moment. Because here is a million dollar question that changes everything. And what is on the other side of this answer will completely change your life. But you have to answer this question today, okay? Like, again, I, I, well, you don't have to. But I want you to begin to process this question. Because Jesus is teaching, and in the middle of his sermon, I imagine he kind of teaching about this, this is my blood, this is my flesh. They know, he knows it's not, people are not like, yeah, man, amen, 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 I agree. That's weird, hey, it's weird. And he knows there's 12, maybe they're over here off stage, maybe they're over there. But I imagine Jesus kind of backs up and looks over at him. Says, hey guys, do you want to go too? You don't answer that question, right? Like, Jesus knows. Hey, do you want to go too? I know you guys have been following me for a while. I know you guys have forfeit family businesses. I know you've walked away from great things. I know you've left careers. I know that you are following me and it's caused you hardship. 
I know that you have followed me, and I've not done things you wanted me to do. I know that you have been following me, and I wasn't able to, or I did not choose to heal the way you wanted me to heal. I know that you've been following me for a couple years now, and your finances are still terrible. I know you've been following me, and your relationship seems like it's not getting any better. I know you've been following me, and everything. It seems like it is falling apart in your life. I know you've been following me, and it just seems like I am sick and tired of following Jesus. Do you want to go too? Jesus, how could you ask me that question? Because I know what you're thinking. Do you want to go too? And watch this response. 68, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? <laughs> Isn't that great? See, you don't understand that yet. Let, let, let me break it up for you. Peter knows, no, we do not want to leave you. Are we mad? Yes. Are we confused? Absolutely. The whole blood and body thing, you got to, you, your verbiage isn't good. Let's just work on that a little bit, okay? John, write that down. We need to work on some things. But Jesus, here's what we know. When we are walking with you and following you, we are following you, we are pursuing you. But to not follow you, to not to pursue you means we are following and pursuing something or someone else. Wow. Who is worth following more than Jesus? What is worth following more than Jesus? So you say, well, I, I just, I, <laughs> I don't know. Well, then don't, don't leave Jesus. Until you have a great answer, until you can come up with a great articulate answer about why you want to no longer follow Jesus, then continue to pursue Jesus. Do you want to go to, uh, real quick, Jesus, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We've come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus, we have followed you long. We have seen you in some sick situations. And you, there's no one greater than you. This is why we forfeit so much. This is why we've changed our entire lives. Is it costing us stuff? Absolutely. Could we do something that may be a lot easier? Oh, you bet. But why would we not follow you? You have the words of eternal life. I'm going to follow you. I want to invite you to bow your head and close your eyes. I want to give you an opportunity to respond back. And maybe, maybe for some of you, like, like this is your situation. Like you've been a Christ follower, maybe for a while, or maybe you're brand new to faith and you're just like, man, I just, I, I, just, I need to try this. I need to like see what God may be up to. And it's just not going the way you thought it was going to go. Maybe you were told like, hey, if you just follow Jesus and trust Jesus, like he's going to take care of everything and it's just going to be so much better. Well, I, I, I honestly truly do believe that following Jesus will, will make me better in, in life and make me better at life. But that's not why I follow Jesus. Like, I, I'm, I'm not following Jesus to, to, to get him to do my bidding and like to try to, you know, force him to do what I need done. I follow Jesus because of what he, had, he has already done. Because of the payment that he has already made for my sin. And I pursue him in a relationship daily. Is it perfect? Nope. Things I need to work on? Absolutely. Things I struggle with? You bet. But if Jesus were to look at me and say, Chad, do you want to go also? Absolutely not, Lord. 
and I'm sorry for what I have done. And I'm sorry for the way I have not pursued you the way that I need to. And I confess my sin to you. And I ask that you forgive me over again. And Jesus, help me to follow you better every day. That's my prayer every day. Father, help me to follow you better every day. For some of you, you need to pray that prayer for the first time. And it needs to be, Lord, help me to follow you. Like, not to just know about you, not to just be surrounded by people who know you and, and to read a, a book filled with information about you. That's great and that's good. But Lord, take me to a space to where we are in a relationship. And I have an understanding of who you are, but I want to be in a relationship so that you begin to direct my paths, so that your influence in my life begins to change, not just me, but my family. So this morning, if that's you, and you want to begin that relationship with Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. You say, well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not ready. I got a lot going on, and, and I can't. I, I, here's the deal. You can bring your doubts. You can bring your fears. You can bring your failures. You can bring all your questions and lay them at the foot of the cross. And Jesus would say, hey, that's okay. Let's begin. Did you know, like... Two prerequisites of following Jesus. One is you have to be a sinner. Two, you need to have doubts. Like that's, that's, that's pretty well the prerequisites of following Jesus. Don't let those be the things that keep you from following him. Like, well, I just don't believe this. I'm not sure if that. Fantastic. Begin to follow him. Yeah, but I got so much going on in my life. You know it. Begin to follow him. Don't clean yourself up first and follow Jesus. Follow Jesus now. Follow Jesus today and let him begin to do the work in your life. So this morning, if you want to do that, I'd love to lead you in a prayer. You can say it after me. You can say it out loud. You can say it in your head. Whatever it is you like to do. But say something like this. Dear Jesus, Lord, come into my life and make me yours. Forgive me of all of my sins and help me to follow you from this day forward. Because I know following you is better than anything else. Following you is better than following something else. So today I surrender and I lay it all at your feet. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Every head bowed, every eyes closed, no one looking around. If you said that prayer this morning and you've asked Jesus Christ to become your Lord and your Savior, would you do me a favor? Would you just slip your hand up real quick and say, hey, you know what, man, that's me. I have accepted Jesus Christ into my life. Anybody at all, just put it up, put it back down. Maybe you're listening to this online somewhere and this is something that you're hearing and you know, man, I need a relationship. I don't need any more what I'm doing. I need a relationship. Then we want you to reach out to us and we want to know, not just so that we can have a number, but so that we can celebrate life change from death to life and we can help you begin to grow in your faith and your walk with Jesus. But there's a whole other group I want to speak to you real quick. And it, it's that group that's at that pivotal moment. Like there's stressors, there's change. And you've, you've got to decide, am I going to follow Jesus or am I not going to follow Jesus? And there's difficulties. If you would just be honest, nobody looking around, because you're trying to make some decisions and you've got to figure out what you're going to do. Would you just slip your hand up real quick so that I can be praying for you? Anybody at all? Am I going to do what God's calling me to do? Amen. Thank you. Or am I going to do this other option? Father, thank you so much for who you are. Lord, we know that in life it is complex. It is difficult. But Jesus, we know that you want what is best for us. God, it's not that you just demand things from us. But you lead and guide and provide so much. 
So, Lord, I pray that you would give us direction for many of us. God, but not just to know what to do, but, God, the boldness and the confidence to move forward as we surrender and continue to die to ourselves and to begin to live for you every day. Help us, Father, to look more like your son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. I'm going to ask the band. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. We just wanted to give a huge thank you to those of you that already partner with us through giving. And we've got multiple resources for you to utilize from to do that. You can give online, you can text the number 84321, or you can download our Church Center app. Again, thank you so much for listening today, and we'll see you next time.